Hello, and welcome back to another episode. Today, hey, I think we're going to head back into the nether. There's a... Uh, well, there's these tall, skeletal guys that I want, you know... I want their heads so that we can go and fight the wither. Because I think today, at the end of the episode today, I would like a beacon. Mm-hmm. I want a beacon. So, let's head on over to the nether. Alright, we have made it back to our nether fortress here. So I'm going to be running around looking for wither skeleton. And hopefully, with my looting three netherite sword, we'll be able to get a few wither skeleton skulls from here. Alright, the places with the four-way intersections are going to be the best bet for finding um, for the skeletons. That's why I was able to find uh, two over here. This spot out here I'm expecting to be pretty good for wither skeletons. I'm seeing four here, and I am in a dead end. Did I get? Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get a single skull from that. Great. We have enough skulls yet. Please. <gasps> oh, look at that. First skull of this session run. Uh. Hmm. Sword. No head. <gasps> nice! Got another skeleton skull. Wither skeleton skull. Just need one more! Oh my gosh, look at that, guys. Last weather skeleton skull that we need. Alright. Alright. Off to fight the, the wither time. Alright, let's talk wither now. Now, my favorite place to take on a wither is way down at the bottom of your world. That way you'll be able to kind of contain the wither. But I want to do something else with the, this wither. I want him to kind of help us, uh, shall we say, mine an area, to, to clear an area down there. We need to try to figure out where in our world that's going to be the most useful. And on sense, we're trying to build our gunpowder farm, which I think I'm going to put over here somewhere. I think we should go down to the bottom of the world underneath that area and... Um, Fight the wither over there. I think that'll be a good idea. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So, I have my soul sand. I have my wither skeleton skulls. I have good armor still. I have a good weapon still, and I have a good bow still. And has infinity, and I have a single arrow on me. I think the only other thing I want to do. Is I think I should actually bring a golden apple or two. I have eight. I have eight golden apples, and I haven't used a single one. Alright, let's go over here. Alright, so this area over here is where I'm thinking of building the gunpowder farm. So let's kind of get coordinates. 
let's see here. 550 minus 300, maybe? That'll be good. Or maybe closer to the center of the building itself. Maybe let's do like 560, 385. 560 minus 385. All right. We are back down in our little mining area here. Let's go find... So, I started this project kind of on camera, kind of off camera. Uh, what this is, is there's... I have walls that are all kind of uh, breaking up the different chunk borders. The idea here was to try to look for slimes. Problem is, is my, I had so many other hostile mobs in the area that I wasn't able to get any slimes to spawn, even if it was a chunk that they are, were able to spawn in. So I've kind of just left this for a while until I've been able to run around and light up some more of the caves. 560. 563.85. Or was it 550? I don't remember. 60. All right. I think it's wither's wither time. So this fight has a couple of stages similar to the... What was going to happen there? Similar to the dragon fight. The first stage we'll be able to you know, kind of sit back and shoot him with our bow for a while. And then, then he'll kind of get kind of a protective armor and we'll have to run up with our sword and start whacking him. Uh, so this will start pretty much as soon as I drop this last wither skeleton skull on here. So, let's do it! Alright. So he's going to see he's kind of blue. He's invulnerable for a little bit here. We're going to kind of sit back, and I'm going to eat my golden apple. He blows up an area. Now we can start shooting him with arrows. See how he has kind of that, that glow around him now? So if I shoot an arrow at him, it doesn't do anything. Now I have to get in here and start whacking him with my sword. And we killed it, and it was immediately in our inventory. This is the thing that he drops. It's called the Nether Star. We use this to make beacons. Now I'm going to... Go back through here and kind of light all of this up. Make sure we don't get any mobs spawning down here. And like that should do it. Now we can head back up to the top. And we'll be able to make a beacon. And I want to make a beacon because we're going to have to uh, dig out a lot of area going up towards the top for our gunpowder farm. So, yeah. We have returned up to the surface, so I think it's time for us to build our beacon. Let's come over here to the crafting table, and we'll need five glass. Go around, now the star in the middle, obsidian down below. There's our first beacon. All right, here's our beacon. So uh, what can we do with beacons? Well, we place it down on the world. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't quite do anything yet. But if we go into here, we can see that if we uh, if we have a basic pyramid here, that's what this is kind of denoting, we can have a speed boost or we could have a haste boost. If we have a, a two-level pyramid, we could have resistance or jump boost. If we had a three-tier pyramid, we could have a strength boost. Then if we have a full uh, pyramid here, we would actually get a bonus 
secondary power. So we could have regeneration or we could pick a, a primary and then have it be boosted a little bit more. So what is uh what what can we use to build our pyramid? Well, we can use these items down here. We can use netherite, we can use emeralds, we can use diamonds, we can use gold, or we can use iron. Now, now we can't just use straight bars of them or straight diamonds or ingots of netherite. We have to use full blocks. So, since we have an iron farm, I think we're gonna use iron. Thank Four blocks of iron is gonna be enough for a full. So let's uh let's put this on a, a first on a little bit of a pyramid and I'll show you what it's like. I do want to mention that it doesn't matter if you use silk touch or not silk touch. The beacon will be fine one way or the other. As you can see. Um and I don't think uh like Efficiency or anything like that speeds up the amount of time that it takes to break the beacon. Uh, so just be aware of that. So, demonstration purposes, we're just going to set up a tier one beacon here. Oh, grabbing our beacon. And if we did it right, you'll see that we have this giant, I don't know, light that's shooting up to the, the top of the world. Now, if we go in here, we can see that this is all lit up. Haste. So if we pick on haste, we this symbol here shows up. So if we actually had a full pyramid here, we can have haste two. Click on speed, we could have speed two, and so on and so forth. The nice thing about these beacons and the, the pyramids that you make is you don't have to have a full separate pyramid for each beacon. So let's say I wanted to have all of the effects going at once, so I and would need to have one, two, three, four, five, six different beacons themselves. So just this block right here at the top. But then I could extend this out more. So if I if I did something like say like that, this spot here, this spot here, this spot here would each function as a separate tier one beacon at the moment. And obviously if I made the the entire pyramid, so went went down the full four layers, did something like that, that would work too. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on my uh, creeper farm, and I'm going to use the beacon for it, and I'm going to use the full, um, full pyramid using the haste to uh, power. Um... Oh, as you see, if I just click here, this is on a tier one, I don't actually get any effect from it. That's because I actually have to offer it tribute to one of these things and then put it here and then the green uh, check mark will be available to me. Uh, and you only have to pay this um, price when you activate it. So if, you, if you're running haste for a while and then you're done with your big mining project and you want to switch over to speed, can switch over to speed and then you'll have to offer it another another tribute you can hit done again and you'll have your beacon switched um the other thing to keep in mind that a beacon is has an area of effect so if this was active if i had uh haste one here active it would only be effective out i think it's about 50 blocks in each direction so that way that way that way and that way it's also only effective 50 blocks down but it extends all the way up to the, the world height so a good idea if you're making beacons and using them and plan on kind of leaving them in your world place them low in your world that way you'll get the full effect and you don't have to worry about being too low in your world for your beacon so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to my gun, where we're going to build the gunpowder farm, and I'm going to place it at, kind of at the bottom, and I'll probably end up building the gunpowder farm um, up around it, just so that I get the full effect of the, the haste when I'm actually taking out the area for the gunpowder farm. All right, I ran around a little bit, and I figured out where I want the dead center of my creeper farm to be. So I'm going to run over there now gonna be right 
these two blocks here are going to be the dead center of my my farm. Now we're going to break like the the first rule of of Minecraft. Don't dig straight down. Now I'm going to show you a, a trick that we can do. So if we stand on two separate um, separate blocks, so. And if I dug down on one side, I can see what's below me on the other side, and I'll be just fine. Now, why am I wanting to dig straight down? Uh, and that is actually because of the beacon itself. Uh, the beacon needs to be able to see the top of the world. And it can go through certain blocks like leaves and glass and um, opaque blocks non-opaque blocks, any blocks that essentially that can let light in and out of, it can, uh, the beam of light will be able to go up to the ceiling. So these leaves here are fine, but like the dirt and the, the cobble and the stone and everything else is going to have to go. So that's why I'm going to actually just dig straight down instead of um, going down into my mines way over there and running down and finding this exact spot underneath. So I've got some uh, mining to do, digging to do. So this is the big benefit of mining straight down with two blocks instead of just one. If I was here, I would have gone right down into hit that hole. Looks like this is all lit up. So I should be safe to just continue digging down here. Yeah. Oh, this is uh this is exactly where I want to be. This is where we fought the wither. Nice. So now I'm gonna I'm probably gonna have to cl uh, clear this out a little bit and open up some more space. Um, because I'm going to have to actually build the pyramid down here. Y value am I at? I'm at Y equals 10. So this is pretty close to where I want to build it. So I will probably end up building the... Oh, that looks like cobs, cobwebs from way down here. I'll have to put the beacon on either this block or this block. And we'll be fine. So I'm going to dig out some space for the base of the pyramid. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before, that this pyramid, unlike the real pyramids over at, at Giza, does have to be completely solid, so I'm going to have to fill it in completely. Right, one, two, three, four. Alright, so that's as high as I need to go. Place that there. And That's the first layer. You can hear the sound. That means it's on running. This should be the full pyramid itself. So if I go in here now, I should have access to everything. Uh, one thing to note, this pyramid is built out of iron, but if I wanted to, I could use emeralds or netherite if I wanted to, diamonds or gold to actually pay the tribute. I don't have to use iron. I have a lot of iron, and that's what I have on me at the moment, so I will be using iron. I think we're going to use haste 2. We're going to activate. Now you see that we have haste 2. Uh, there is a counter. Every few seconds it'll kind of refresh if I'm within the range. That means that I can kind of go outside of that 50 block radius for about 15 seconds and still have the effect active. So, uh, yeah. Let's see how fast this actually, uh, this actually is. <laughs> it's an instant mine. Oh, I love this. Well, I'm going to clear out this area really fast, but, uh, yeah, I think that might be uh might be next next episode. So, thank you guys so much for watching. 
and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.